Good morning. <laughs> Happy Easter. <laughs> yeah, I was just um, I was just thinking about Easter as I was sat here. What does it What does it even mean? And I just thought, wow, it's it's the release of all limitations. That was what the demonstration was. There are no limitations when you let go of the identity of the body, then there are no limits. But the, the body seems to hold a lot of limits. Thoughts about the body, thoughts about who we are, hold a lot of limits. And so this story has been told for thousands of years is um, telling us that uh, we're, not, we're not limited. <laughs> and um, we don't have to crucify ourselves <laughs> any longer. <laughs> yeah, that, that time is gone. So I'd actually like to start with um, reading a prayer for us. Let me remember what my purpose is. If I forget my goal, I can be but confused, unsure of what I am, and thus conflicted in my actions. No one can serve contradicting goals and serve them well, nor can he function without deep distress and great depression. Let us therefore be determined to remember what we want today, that we may unify our thoughts and actions meaningfully and achieve only what God would have us do this day. Father, forgiveness is your chosen means for our salvation. Let us not forget today that we can have no will but yours and thus our purpose must be yours as well, if we would reach the peace you will for us. Yeah, so this is a time of coming back together, remembering, I think that was, my, was on my mind, to remember what this is all about, what this journey is all about. And um, there can be a lot of obstacles to that <laughs> along the way, as we, as we all know. Um, it, seems, it seems like a wonderful thing, doesn't it? The spiritual journey, it's kind of dressed up when we first get into this all these sort of like exciting new ideas, new avenues, the chance of freedom, liberation, peace, love, joy, sounds great, doesn't it? You think, yeah, I've, I've had enough of doing what I'm doing. This sounds really, really good. Yeah, you can meditate, you sit there, you be quiet, be peaceful, uh, you get on better with people. Oh yeah, this sounds, this sounds really good. Connect with yourself. Oh yeah, wow, wonderful, okay, yeah. So you start exploring all this, I'm talking for myself here. So you start exploring all these little things and you start doing things that you never thought you'd do before. You end up going and doing crazy dancing things and God knows what else. <laughs> Alternative dancing, whatever you want to call it. Just to start letting go of those blocks, opening up your heart more. So it becomes fun. And there's all these different things that you can choose to do. So you end up going to all these different um, groups over the weeks and months, <laughs> exploring all these different traditions. Yeah, oh, this is this is this is really this is really fun. You're meeting different people, and then finally you decide to choose your chosen path, as as we all have together here today. 
oh great, finally I've found the one that really resonates with me and I really want to go for it. I'm going to give everything to this now. This is great. I've got one book, brilliant. It's got everything in it, all I need. Yeah, I've just got to do these. It's got lessons. Perfect. So I've just got to follow along simply. It's not hard, is it? I can do the lessons. I've got text so I can read along. And I've also got a manual for teachers to tell me what, my, what I'm going to do. Oh, brilliant. This, this, is going to, this is going to be easy. This is going to be great. So here we are. We're all, we're all ready to go into it. And maybe we start having the miracle straight away. We have some nice experience. Oh, this is good. Really good. You, you're meeting nice people along the way. This is great. Then all of a sudden, <laughs> things <laughs> start going rapidly wrong. <laughs> and you're like, hold on a minute. This is not what I signed up for. <laughs> all this stuff's coming up. I was, I was enjoying this. I was enjoying this new perception of myself. I was enjoying these miracles. And now I'm going a little bit deeper into my mind. Oh, this, 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 isn't, this isn't so good. And I think the great thing about that actually is, is that you, you come, when you kind of hit that point, you've come far enough along to know that you don't want to turn back. <laughs> Otherwise, I think we'd all be turning back. Oh, OK, I'm, I'm done with this. Thank you very much. <laughs> this is too much. But we've sort of like marched along. Oh, this is really great. And then all of a sudden, you hit these pitfalls. And you think, wow, I've actually got nothing to go back to. So I've got to go through. I've got, I've got, to, get, I've got to get through this. So it, ta it takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of vigilance. <laughs> I, never, I never knew actually how much this was going to take. You know, my pride, manliness. Yeah, I've got what it takes. Yeah, I, I, this, can't, this can't be that hard. I'm sure I'll be able to get through this stuff. No problem. Let's, let's do it. And like it's so interesting, the Course in Miracles, it's like the ego really does not like this. And it's like all of a sudden it's like wading through mud. It's like you're like just going down. You just think, what the hell is going on? I really do not feel that great. This is really tough. My thoughts, my guilt. I didn't realize how guilty I felt. That I saw that everything I'm doing is completely and utterly in guilt. People pleasing trying to get it right, maybe even rebelling and trying to get it wrong, not caring, caring too much, too responsible, not responsible enough. And you start to see this barrage of who you have believed to be, the, the mask, the persona, the idea. It's like, wow, I am wrapped up in this idea of this thing, and it is pretty, it seems pretty tough to get out, to get out of the way. And one of the lines actually that came to me this morning, um, which I think is a really good one when you're really struggling, and he says, not, not, not in this particular way, but he says, it's not about your readiness, I'm ready now. You don't have to be ready, you just trust that I'm ready, and I'm here now. There's never a time when I'm not ready. And it's like, wow, that can stop a lot of, oh, I can't do it. <laughs> I'm not good enough. <laughs> I'm not going to get through this. I don't, I don't know how I'm going to do this. He's, he's already stated. Well, you don't have to be ready. I'm ready. I'm the one that's going to make it happen. It's this deeper trust. And um, for me, it's like when I'm really fired up, that's when everything seems to change. But it's like this depression. <laughs> I never thought that was depressed, but we'll just call it that. This seeming depression that comes over me and just wants to drag me down. And it feels so hard to really get that strength of that will, like to join my will, like, no, I really want this. I want this more than anything. There has to be another way. There has to be something else. Of course, that's what, that's what we've all said. You wouldn't be sitting here today if you haven't said these exact same things as what, I, what I've said. But yet, how easy is that to forget? That desire, that drive to really, really want this. So easy to forget. I don't know how that's even possible, really. When you sort of like snap out of it, you think, what, why did I go back down in that hole again? How the hell did I go back down there? Well, there's no need to look back. We are, we are going forwards. We are going towards the light. 
miracles are seen in light. That's what our uh, review lesson is for today. And um, miracles are seen in light, and light and strength are one. And actually in the review today was really beautiful. He says, like, yeah, be mindful of your willingness because it wavers and it's very, very sneaky. You think you're willing, but in actual fact, oh, yeah, oh, I missed my lesson, oh well. I'll do it in the next hour. Or, oh, something else has come up in this moment. <laughs> On the hour, it normally does. Just to like throw you, okay, I can't do that now, I'll come back to it later. May get forget, forgotten. And of course, it's that he's telling us that's not to beat ourselves up. We just only keep coming back to now. But of course, the ego wants to beat us up. Oh, you didn't do very well today, did you? Thought you wanted to wake up. What have you been doing? Lounging around, doing nothing. What did you do with your mind? Yeah, doing good at this, aren't you? And it wants to <laughs> bring you down, really bring you down. And this is, the, this is the time. This is the resurrection, isn't it? This is when he rose above the whole thing and said, yeah, this is not real. This does not matter. Well, I'm, I'm, be, I'm being crucified, and you cannot crucify me. I'm not, I'm not the body. I'm not a body. I am free. Why do you think he walked there? You know, he, he didn't really give up a fight at that point. He just walked to the cross. It's like, wow, that's a, that's a big surrender, because he knew I'm not this. And the real story is, and I'm going to show you that you're not that by coming back and resurrecting that you're not the, not the body. And that's the same, you know, look at the ego's game. The ego just twisted that and we're all looking at the crucifixion. So when I was at school, we learned a little bit about this stuff and I thought, God, who wants to get involved with this? It just feels like hell. You're going to be punished if you do bad things. We've already had one that was crucified for your problems. Uh, okay, this doesn't sound too healthy to me. No, thank you. But no one really talks about the resurrection, the freedom. The freedom is here, the freedom is now. And so it's to remember those miracles that we've all had, that we all share. It's all our mind. So whether it's someone sharing a miracle with you, that's, that's your miracle. That's your, that's your mind. This is our convincing. Well, I just need so much convincing when I go in that hole. And as I was just sharing a minute ago, it's like when I have that strong desire, a really, really strong desire that I have had enough, then that's when the whole thing starts to really, really change. And that, that has happened, that's happened several times in this seeming, seeming life to really convince me. I was sharing with my friend yesterday, actually, before I got into this, the spiritual thing, I didn't really, I didn't really believe in it, but an experience actually came to me to convince me. People had talked to me about spiritual stuff, but I thought, oh, I think it's a load of old nonsense, really. I don't believe it. I don't believe you can have these experiences and whatever. And um, yeah, a beautiful experience came to me. I, uh, and I didn't know what it was. It's actually just watching birds. I was walking in a beautiful lake that I really loved. And I was practicing being really, really mindful I was training as a psychotherapist at the time, and I recognised that if I was really, really fully present, that I would have better sessions with my clients. So I thought, OK, that seems like a really good thing. And mindfulness had become a, a big deal, so I thought, OK, I'm going to practise this. And, we, and I was walking around the, the lakes and just being really, really mindful. And each time my mind was wandering into thoughts, no, come back, just enjoy the trees, just enjoy the birds enjoy the lake, enjoy the smells, enjoy everything around me. And I was really, really present, really, really focused. And then with that, it was like this, these seagulls seemingly come from nowhere. And they just flew. And it was like my whole perception just changed. And I just joined with the, with the birds. And I'd never, ever seen them fly like that in my life. It was just so beautiful to watch. It was like, wow. I was just staring at it. 
I just didn't know what was happening to me. And then all of a sudden, I just, uh, then I had the thought, what the hell is this? And snapped out of it. And I just thought, wow, what just happened? I'm stone cold sober. I haven't taken any drugs. And something has just happened in my perception. What, what the hell was that? That was, that was amazing. It felt really like beautiful inside. And I'd remember reading like, oh yeah, people have had these experiences through connecting with nature. I thought, wow. I feel so lucky that I've, that I've experienced this. And because I was training to be a psychotherapist, I thought, wow, I really want to know what this is. I really want to know what this perception thing is. And of course, over time, that's why the, why the course came into my life, to really teach me about perception. And one thing that really interested me actually about psychotherapy is what I noticed was, is there was some sort of healing that took place that was beyond the words beyond anything that we were doing, beyond any of the interventions. It just seemed to be this connection that was formed and then somehow there was some sort of like lift, lift from the person. And so I was very, very lucky actually to study with many seeming world-class psychotherapists from around the world. And I would often ask that question, what is that experience that that we have when someone just seems to lift up and you just feel so connected in that moment with that person. You just feel completely like one. Oh, it's an I-thou moment. I think that was Martin Buber, he, he called it an I-thou moment. You just join in the one uh, magical moment, a, a, a mystery moment, a spiritual moment. Yeah, but what is that? What, 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 what is this? Well, we, we don't know. We don't know what that is. So I was really interested in that and I really, really wanted to find out and I guess that's why the course came along and, and told me. And so I remember at that time I was really, really passionate about finding out these things. So I wanted to find out about this perception and slowly my perception started to change and I had many, many of these experiences that, that, that came to me and I kept seeing different things. I'm like, wow, I can't believe this. There's like something really, really going on that's very, very different. And then, of course, I, I found out that it was the, the Holy Spirit. It's the spirit of who you are, the truth of who you are. When you join with a brother in tr truth, it's, it's all over. The, the, healing's, the healing's done. Um, it doesn't take words to do that or anything. It's just purely that you want to deeply, deeply connect with who you are. In that, in that moment. And so this is what I feel like today is for me, is just to deeply, deeply connect back to myself, to who I really am. And even when I don't feel that inside, I don't feel that love, I don't feel that connection as connected, that's the time to be much more vigilant. That's the time when we really need our lessons. I'm telling myself here. That's the time when it's like, no, no, this is not what this course is. It's not a course in suffering. It's a course in miracles. It's easy to forget that, isn't it? You know, it's on the title. You see your book every single day and there you are suffering. And you're like, oh, hold on a minute. I'm actually doing a course in miracles. And that's the most important thing. Miracles are gonna, gonna change our mind, change the whole thing to see that the love that we are. And that was my, that was my real, real deep prayer. And so I'm, I'm reinforcing this deep prayer because I actually didn't believe in love. I thought it was nonsense. I thought, there's no love here. It doesn't really feel that loving. It seems like wants and needs to me and lust and desire, but it doesn't feel like love because it can, it can change in any moment. How can you love and hate in a person or, or yourself in, in any given moment. A lot of self-help teaches you to, to love yourself and you're like, how do you do that? What's that? I don't love myself. I don't even know what love is. And that's the beautiful thing about the course, isn't it? I cannot teach you what love is because that is beyond what can be taught. However, what can be taught is to release the blocks from love's presence. Okay, well, that's, that's pretty cool. And so every, every spiritual path, re real, real spiritual path, points to the same thing. We're all one, we are all connected, and that there is a love beyond ourselves. 
beyond everything. And it's like, wow. And finally, we've all studied different things and done different things in our, in our lives. And there's always arguments, aren't there? It's like in psychotherapy. Oh, someone writes a paper. There's 20 people arguing against it. It's like, oh my God, this is really painful. All these journals writ about all this stuff. And it's like, well, we actually don't really know. We're just theorizing what we believe to be going on, but we don't actually really know what is best. So how is that healing? So when I found this, the, the spiritual, I thought, wow, isn't it interesting that there's seemingly so many different countries, so many different modalities, that they all point to this one thing. But well, really, it's unconditional love. That's, that's what you are. And I thought, wow, that's pretty convincing that so many people, no, we don't argue on that. No religion argues on that, no love. It's about the love underneath it all. It's actually really love. So no one actually argues on that case. But yet not everyone's experienced that. <clears throat> so we have, to take it, we have to take it for its word. Well, that's not what the Course is teaching. It's not that we just have to take it for its word. We want the experience. And so I thought to myself, I thought, wow, if that's really real, if this unconditional love is really, really real, then I want it. I really, really want it. I want it all the time. That's my prayer. Forget everything else. There's an unconditional love that I am, and I don't know that. That's what I want. That feels like a goal. And I set myself, actually, funny enough, an another goal, because I felt really, really unloving. <laughs> I often do this to myself. I set myself these goals. And I thought, wow, I really feel unloving. I don't, I don't really know how to love people. I don't know how to love at all. I um, don't know how to love myself. Um, and people have said, yeah, I feel sometimes your heart's pretty closed off. I said, yeah, I know. I'd love, to, <laughs> I'd love to find an answer for that. And I thought to myself, well, what's the, what's the best thing for my life then? What's the best thing that I can do? And I thought, Psychother psychotherapist, no, no, that's not the best thing I can do. What, what is it I can do? And I thought, well, probably the hardest thing <laughs> I could do was love everyone. <laughs> what about if you could really love everyone and everything? That seems, and I, and I felt it, and so I thought, that's a, that's a pretty good goal. That's a really, really good thing. I, had a, I have a wonderful friend that actually lives in London, and, and, and we would talk and share these things. And he was very go goal oriented and he's, he, does, he does lots of beautiful things. He said, what's your goal? I said, yeah, my goal is I really, really want to learn to love. And I want to learn to love everyone. And I think that's my, that's my life. And he's like, well, that's a, that's, a, that's a really good goal. That's a really, really good thing to do. And I thought, yeah, that's a really good thing to do. Wow, is it hard. <laughs> that is a really hard goal. <laughs> I didn't realise it was going to be this hard. <laughs> I knew it was going to be hard. I thought, okay, there's a bit of turning around in my mind. Wow, this is one hell of a journey. The Course in Miracles turns up. Okay, great. I've got a manual. I've got a, uh, yeah, a guide. A guide, so this is going to help me. This is it. This is, this, this, this is the love. This is what I'm going to share. <laughs> this is what I'm going to share. This should be a really good fun, this, this journey. Wow, it's, it's very different, isn't it, than what, what, what I thought. But yeah, I think this is just about, about giving us all that courage to, to really remember why we're, why we're doing this. Is I am doing it because I want to experience that love all the time. The love of God is not of this world. It is nothing compared to this world. Um, I've had enough experience to experience something way beyond all of this, complete and utter nonsense. It really is, I can guarantee it, if you have not experienced that, it is nonsense this world, it really is, complete and utter. And who you think you are is nonsense. You really do not have to believe in that. I am telling you, the whole thing is absolutely wonderful. And I've only glimpsed at it. I've just peeked at it, and it's like, 
I'd forgotten that I really, really want that. Who wants to stay in this suffering when you can really, really love and you can really, really give? You know, you, you, we're all trying to give here and there's nothing, there's nothing you can do to actually give. God will give through you and you won't be able to stop it because the love is so immense that it wants to give to everyone to show that this is who you are. And that's really our, our only function is to, to remember that love for ourselves and that will radiate and whoever's around you will remember that. But it's really only for yourself and whoever gets brought up in that, then that's wonderful. That's why we all join together today. We join together to remember that. So this is the, this is what I'm doing this course for. I've let go of my family, I've let go of my friends, I've let go of my job, I've let go of money, of this life, of seemingly having a life. For what? For the real life. <laughs> I thought that was life, it's not life. And it's not in the sense of oh, I've given them up, I'm, I'm, having, I'm having to suffer. No, I'm giving them up to reclaim them again, like Jesus did. He reclaimed himself, didn't he? Through the resurrection, he's like, well, do you, well, you think I'm going anywhere? Where would I go? That was like Ramana Maharaji, wasn't it? When all of his disciples were around him, crying, Master, what are we going to do without you? He said, where am I going? <laughs> he knew. It's like, what are, what are you talking about? Seemingly, as he leaves his body, a massive great shooting star flashes across the Indian skyline. Thousands, probably millions of people in India saw the exact same thing. Yeah, I'm not going anywhere. And then this day, Jesus. <sighs> okay, I'm going to walk to the crucifixion. And, you know, you go around the churches, don't you? And you see the bloody scenes on all of the, um, what they call those windows? Can't remember now. Stained glass windows. And they all go round and oh, and it shows you all, all the terrible bit. By the time you get to the end of it, you're, you're worn out looking at these pictures. No wonder, no wonder you don't want to go to church. And then finally there's a, there's a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. You think, okay, get me out of here. <laughs> that feels like enough for one day of suffering. Thank you very much. And yet he was like, no, no. <laughs> the first window should have been the resurrection, you idiots. <laughs> What are you doing? What are you doing? You've got it all back to front. I came back. I showed you. I'm not the body. And you're like, oh, my God, that was awful. So, <laughs> and that's the thing. It's, it's like when you look at it, that's our problem. We think we're so awful. And he, and he proved to us. He's like, you're not even that. You're not even this. You're not even awful. I'm just going gonna, I'm just gonna to prove this to you in three days, four days, whatever it was. And yet we completely, <laughs> completely missed it. So that's what we're doing. We're coming back together to really, really remember this. That this is not the truth. This realm is not the real. It's not who we are. So I think that's, that's the beautiful thing that we have when we join together in that. To remember that that's not who we are. That this love is real. And if you're not experiencing it now, then get down on your knees and pray for it. <laughs> because you deserve it. That's the point. That's the whole point. You absolutely deserve it. We have to give everything. I've got to give everything to this. My desire has to be high. He says it's only your willingness. That's all we have to do. We don't have to figure this out. I don't have to figure any of this out. I don't have to figure out who I am. Don't have to do any of that. I just have to be completely and utterly willing, willing to join. So that's the, that's the message for today, everyone. <laughs> oh, dear. Happy Easter. <laughs> May the Lord be with you. May you remember that you are loved and I am loved and I love you. Thank you so much. <laughs>